Welcome to the broadcast. This is Pefas Yokimao Community Church. My name is Reverend Paul Munyeri. On this Easter Sunday, I want to bring the word of God on the topic, the victory of the cross. We are celebrating Easter all over the world at a time where church people are not able to meet as they normally do because of the coronavirus epidemic. But all the same, we continue to bring you the word of God from wherever you are so that we can be able to know what Easter means for us. Easter is a celebration of the death of Jesus and his resurrection after three days. It talks about the defeat that Jesus had over sin, the world, the devil, and even death. And also restoring man back to his former position of dominion and rulership. And Jesus did all this, being born on earth as a man, and also defeating the enemy as a man, not for himself, but on behalf of mankind. And so as we are talking about the victory of Jesus, we need to know that he did all this so that we could be able to obtain his victory and apply it for our own lives. Because he was gone from eternity past and he did not need to die. He did not need any victory because he was already victorious. But he did all this for you and for me. And I want us to look at five areas of the victory of Jesus. Number one is Jesus' victory over sin. Why was Jesus or how was Jesus able to overcome sin as a man in this world? Number one thing that is, is important for us to realize is that Jesus was born holy by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born without a human father. There was no any blood of any man that, uh, that, uh, that came to him so that he could not have the human nature of sin. And the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 1 verse number 35 that the angel told Mary, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Jesus was born without a human father by the power of the Holy Spirit. And by that, God was able to make sure that there was no any human blood that would come from the Father to, to Jesus so that he was born holy, not like other people. Something else that is very important for us to realize is that during the other life of Jesus, he lived a sinless life. He was tempted many times by the enemy, including when he was tempted after praying and fasting for 40 uh, days and 40 nights, as we see it in the book of Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to verse number 11. But the Bible says that Jesus defeated Satan. Every time that he was tempted, he was able to use the word of God and to remind the enemy that it is written. And this is what all of us are supposed to do whenever we go through temptations, when the enemy comes and brings suggestions to our minds that are ungodly, then we are supposed to always remind the enemy of what the word of God says. And Jesus overcame all the temptations. In the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse number 15, the Bible reads, the, uh, reads for we do not have a high priest who is unable to feel sympathy for our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Jesus was tempted just like us in every way, but in every single occasion, he was able to overcome and he lived a sinless life. But the Bible is also telling us that Jesus is our high priest. He represents us before God in heaven. He has an eternal ministry of intercession. He is our advocate before the Father. 
And the Bible is saying that he, he sympathizes with our weaknesses. He understands what you are going through on earth because he also went through it and he is able to, uh, to identify with our weaknesses. The number two kind of victory that we see of Jesus is Jesus' victory over the world. In the book of John 16, 33, the Bible says, Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus is saying that he overcame the world on our behalf so that we can also be able to overcome the world. What does the world mean in this context? It does not talk about the physical world as we know it. It is not talking about the earth. But the world here means is talking about the world systems, the cultures, the traditions, the various systems of people on earth. And when you are talking about world systems, you are talking about human operations that are based on human wisdom and in many cases with very little regard of God. When you are talking about traditions of people, you are talking about communities on earth. The way they are able to hand over their traditions from one generation to the other. And in many ways, you'll find that human traditions are ungodly. Others are demonic. Others are very evil in their various forms. And even during the time that Jesus was here on earth, he had to fight a lot with the Jewish ungodly traditions. And in the book of Mark 7, verse 8 and 9, the Bible says, Jesus said, you have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. You have a way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. During the time of Jesus, he observed the communities in Israel and he realized that many a time they had put away the ways of God, the commandments of God, and they were following their own traditions that were ungodly while they were making them to, re, uh, to replace the traditions or rather the commandments of God. Today in our country, in central Kenya, we are having a big danger where we are finding that people are going back to, to traditions that they had left a long time ago. You begin to find that the young people are being required to give goals to the elders as a way of graduating from childhood to manhood uh, through some rituals that are very evil, very demonic, where they are beginning to erect altars of evil in the lives of our young people. This is a great danger that we need to pray about. This is a very demonic kind uh, of a way or traditions that need really God to help us so that our young people can be able to avoid them. When you're talking about culture and subcultures, this is where you find, as we say, culture is an acceptable way of life. And you'll find that people through their cultures, they will, accept, uh, they will accept some things as a good way of life. And many, or in many cases, those acceptable ways are against the word of God. You'll find you'll have like th about three uh, types of cultures. One are the cultures that follow the word of God. There are things that are done in some cultures that are very biblical. Maybe people may not even have known that they are doing those things because they are biblical, but they are doing things as uh, also the Bible commands. There are people who love one another in other cultures. There are people who are supporting one another. There are people who are helping the needy in their cultures. And all those cultural things are good and also biblical. There are also some other things in culture that are neutral. They are neither good nor bad. But also on the other side, there are casual things that are not godly. 
they are unbiblical. They are against the teachings of the word of God. And these are the kind of cultures that we are supposed to be very careful about so that we don't follow them. We don't become victims of doing things in our cultures or even our subconscious that are evil. Today you may look around all, almost all over the world and you find that people are walking in the streets almost naked. Something that is really promoting immorality and all that. And these are things, together with many others, that are not good in the eyes of God. Also, when we are talking about the world, we are talking about human value systems. It is very important for people who want to follow God the believer to know that they are, we are not supposed to do things as others. We are not supposed to value what the other people value. We must be different. We must have a world view, a, pers a, 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 a per perspective to us life that is very different from the other people. In the book of Romans 12, verse number 2, Romans 12, 2, the Bible says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and to approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. The Bible is telling us that we should not conform to the pattern of the world. We are not supposed to copy what the world is doing. We are not supposed to copy the ways of the world. We must ask ourselves, is this something that is pleasing before God? And if it is not, then we are not supposed to do things the way the world is doing. There is a world mentality about everything. And as believers, we cannot go with the world mentality of things. We cannot do things the way the world does. How does the world do its things? When people are in business, when they, want, they are looking for contracts, they are looking for jobs, they are looking for tenders, many times you will find that many people in the world, they will go out at a bribe. When people are doing their own things, they'll take shortcuts, they'll be able, uh, they'll be corrupt in one way or the other, and these are things that are not acceptable. These are the ways of the world that the believer is not supposed to conform to. When people want positions, you fight, especially in politics, people will fight to one another, they'll undermine one another, they'll be willing even to destroy the careers of one another, they'll be willing to uh, destroy one another, and even sometimes people go to the extreme of even wanting to kill one another so that they can be able to get position. It is unfortunate that sometimes even in church, you'll find people pulling one another down, undermining one another, tarnishing one another's name because of positions and all that. Using the ways of the world to achieve something that we think is spiritual. And we need God to help us uh, not to do this. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. And so we are supposed to follow the example of Jesus. Number three thing that I would want to share with us today is Jesus' victory over the devil. Jesus' victory over the devil. As I mentioned earlier, Satan tried to tempt Jesus into sin. But I thank God that every time that the enemy brought uh, every kind of a temptation, Jesus was able to overcome it by saying, it is written, quoting the word of God and defeating the devil. In the first John chapter 3 verse number 8, first John 3, 8, the Bible says that the reason the son of God was revealed was to destroy the work of the devil. Jesus came, and as he was doing his other ministry, we see that he was going from place to place, doing good things, and destroying the works of Satan. This was a good example on how even the church would later be able to operate. And that is why when the disciples were asking Jesus about what he was doing, he told them that greater things than these will you do. Jesus came to destroy the works of 
the enemy. He was healing the sick. He was casting out demons. He was raising the dead and performing diverse miracles to the glory of God. Jesus also came through defeating the, the, the devil to establish his kingdom on earth. And that is why when he was teaching his disciples about prayer, in the book of Matthew 6, verse number 10, he said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are supposed to pray and to establish the kingdom of God in our lives, in our families, in our churches, in our communities, and even in our nation and in the nations of the world because that is why Jesus came to establish the kingdom of God. And when you look at the kingdom of God, it has power, it has glory, it has great riches, it has peace, it has joy. Joy. It has a number dance of all good things. And in the kingdom of God, there is no sin. There is no sickness. There is no poverty. There is no evil. And so in our lives, we are supposed to see the kingdom of God established. That is why Jesus was saying in John 10.10, 10, John 10.10, 10, Jesus said, The thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I, Jesus, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. The desire, the design of God is that men who believe in him, then they can be able to enjoy an abundance of life. They can have eternal life and also in, the, in this life, they can be able to enjoy the abundance of the good things of God. In the book of Colossians 2.15, Colossians 2.15, the Bible shows us the way that Jesus defeated the devil on the cross. The Bible says, And having disarmed the powers and authorities, Jesus made a public spectacle of them traveling over them by the cross. Through the cross of Jesus, Jesus was able to disarm. He was able to take the powers of Satan. He was able to disarm the powers and the authorities and the rulers of darkness and the dominions of darkness, taking away their power. And that is why the Bible shows us that when Jesus died, he went to hell and he took the keys from Satan, the keys of life and death, and he reselected with the victory uh, in the name of Jesus. And then number four thing that I would want us to look at today is Jesus' victory over death and the grave. Jesus' victory over death and the grave. In the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8 to verse number 10. Ephesians 4, verse 8 to 10. When you read in your own time, you can see what the Bible says. That when Jesus died, he went to the lower parts of the earth. He went to the lower parts of the earth and he took what was captivity. There were many souls of the righteous people. When you read in the book of Luke chapter 16, verse 22 to 24, Luke 16, 22 to 24, you will see the parable that Jesus gave about the rich man and Lazarus. And then we see Abraham and Lazarus in one area, what the theologians will call the Abraham's bosom, the place they call the Abraham bosom. What does this mean? It means that the righteous people of the Old Testament, they could not go direct to heaven because the blood of Jesus had not been offered in heaven to open the heavens for, for the righteous people. But they were at a place that the theologians call the Abraham bosom awaiting the death of Jesus so that Jesus would open the heavens for them. And what the Bible says is that when Jesus died, he went down to prison. He went down to that place where the righteous people were held as captives. Yes, they were still enjoying themselves as we see Abraham and Lazarus, but they could not be able to go before God in heaven, in paradise, or in the heavenly paradise. And in the Ephesians 4, verse 8 to 10, it shows us that Jesus, he went down to the lower parts of the earth, 
talking about hell and he took uh, that ca captivity rather he took that ca captivity that was there and he took it captive and he was able to release the righteous people that were under the captivity of Satan and he was able to go with them to heaven and that is why you find the Bible saying that even when Jesus died there were some troops graves of righteous people in Jerusalem who were raised to dead and they were seen walking with Jesus in Jerusalem for some time before then they could go with him to heaven. And we are seeing that Jesus came so that he could overcome death and also the grave. The Bible says that he was put on the tomb on a, on a Friday and then on Saturday morning Jesus resurrected from the dead. Jesus was able to resurrect from the dead because the grave could not be able to continue to hold Jesus. Death could not continue to hold Jesus. And he resurrected from the dead and the Bible says that he was seen by his disciples. He appeared to them for a period of 40 days. He could appear to them from place to place. And in the book of 1 Corinthians 15, First Corinthians 15 verse 3 to verse number 9, the Bible says that he appeared to many people, about 500 people at various times. He appeared to Peter. He appeared to the 12. He appeared to James. He appeared to about 500 of them physically. And also Paul says much later, he revealed himself to Paul. And so we are seeing the victory of Jesus over death and the grave. And the last thing that I would want us to see today is Jesus' victory that he gave the believer a new position. Jesus' victory gave the believer a new position in God. In the book of Ephesians 2 verse number 6, Ephesians 2 verse number 6, the Bible says, And God raised us up with Christ. And God raised, raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. The Bible is saying that those who are in Jesus Christ, they have been raised up. The same way God raised Jesus from the dead, we have also been raised up from our spiritual death and we have been raised with Jesus Christ. And not only that, but we have been seated with him in heavenly realms where Jesus is seated. In the book of the same book of Ephesians 1 verse 20 and 21, the Bible says, When God raised Jesus from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in this present age, but also in the age to come. When Jesus ascended to heaven, he went and he sat at the right hand of God, seated in the heavenly realms, and the Bible says that he sees far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and over every name, not just in this present age, but for eternity. That is how he will be. But it is interesting to see that if Jesus is seated there, Fall above all the authorities and we as believers, we are seated with Jesus there. Then it is important for us to be able to note that we are also seated with the power. Fall above all authorities and rulers of darkness because we are seated with Jesus Christ. But there is something also interesting in chapter number 3, Ephesians 3, verse 10 to 11, where the Bible says that God's intent was that now, through the church, note that, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in heavenly realms according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus... Or God the Father, he raised Jesus from the dead and he also sat us together with Jesus in heavenly places. Why? 
so that he could make his eternal purpose the mysteries of God that were not known before even to the ages. He made them manifest or his wisdom would be made manifest to the ages and to other authorities and powers and rulers in heaven through the church. God was selling or rather was revealing to the ages and the powers in heaven about his manifold wisdom and his eternal purpose of the redemption of man. The way that he was going to redeem man and get him back to the position that he had from eternity past. In other words, the church has been given a special seat, a special place by God in heaven, a position of dominion power and rulership and the headship in, in heaven. We have been given the power and the victory of Jesus so that then we can be able to apply the victory that Jesus had. As I said in the beginning, Jesus did not need to die for himself. Jesus did not win to conquer for himself. He was a conqueror from the beginning, but he conquered on our behalf so that then we can be able to obtain that victory and we apply it in our lives. And that is why the Bible in Romans 8, 37 says, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We don't need to fight. He has already obtained the victory for us. Ours is to apply the victory of Jesus in our lives, in our Christian walk with the Lord uh, so that we can continue to be more than conquerors uh, in our Christian life. And so in summary, what you are saying is that Easter reminds us of Christ's victory over sin, over the world, over the devil, over death and even the grave. Jesus has obtained victory victory on our behalf and we can be able to apply it in our lives in the name of Jesus. I want us to pray as we close in the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you so much for the work of the cross of Jesus. We thank you that Jesus, you died on the cross, that you may give us victory over sin, over the world, over the devil, over death and even over the grave, O oh Lord. And today we thank you because you have made us to be more than conquerors in you, O oh Lord. As we continue, Father, to celebrate Easter, we pray, may you enable us, O oh Lord, to continue to apply this victory in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And now as we go to close, I just want to remind us that we'll continue to stream our, our sermons through the Facebook, the YouTube. And we're also on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. We shall continue to stream our messages through the Kingdom TV. And you're welcome uh, so that you can be able to partner with us and even to enjoy uh, the, the preachings together with us. I also want to remind us that we can continue to give our tithes and our offerings, especially the members of our church, Perfus Yokimau Community Church, uh, through our pay bill number, uh, 785060. Otherwise, may the Lord bless you. Thank you for so much. Until next time, God bless you. Stay safe. Shalom. Amen.